Every piece of content you make is like a brick. For many creators, their content ends up being a series of disorganized bricks on the ground. Like a significantly less impressive, more disorganized version of Stonehenge. On the other hand, savvy creators organize their content bricks. They build connections between them to fortify and support each other. They organize major central content pillars, and with intention, build something strong, cohesive, and engaging out of it. They consider not just one piece of content, one brick, but the entire body of work, and how it relates together to build something with purpose. They build a content temple. Before we begin, you can go through this topic at your own pace by checking out the companion article on andycormier.blog. But now, let's begin. First off, what is a content temple? Like a museum, people can walk into your content temple and see what you've made, what your style is, and what your message is. Your audience can explore different rooms of this museum-like content temple and find different focuses, methods, media, and ideas. Your content temple might have multiple types of media within it, like written works including blogs and books, photos, videos, and streams. And if you live stream, it's like the visitors get to watch you make your art live. However, your content temple should be open to explore whether or not you are live making your art. Meaning that instead of streaming alone, you might need to shift some of that focus to more on-demand content on YouTube and TikTok. Watch that video right here. But the point is, everything you make relates together somehow, thanks to the content pillars you've built that support your entire content temple. Someone who just spends a few minutes exploring your content temple should get a very clear idea of what you make and what you stand for. But the idea behind this content temple concept is this. You need to plan your content cohesively around core pillars. And you need to figure out who your content is for. Plan your content cohesively, understand the impact you want to make with your body of work, and build your content temple. So how do you build your content temple? First, make efforts to understand who your content temple is for. Like, who is your overall target audience? What do they typically watch? What are their preferences? What are their goals? What are some potential demographics you might consider, like age or location? Even go so far as to imagine like specific faces for people who might be watching your content. Of course, you don't have to have an answer for every single possible demographic either. You might imagine that your content is for like college-aged gamers who like competing and fighting games. In this case, location and most other demographics kind of don't matter. And on the flip side, some people who don't fit your target demographic still might appreciate what you make, even if they're not the audience that you're specifically imagining your content is for. Con consider this. The average Museum of Fine Arts and the average Rodeo have very different intended audiences. They're both perfectly valid places for entertainment, but they rarely attract the exact same type of audience. The same idea should go for your content temple. Get an understanding of who you're making it for. That said, many people who enjoy rodeos also enjoy fine arts and vice versa. But a rodeo and a museum of fine arts both have very distinct identities and very distinct target demographics. Equally as important of understanding who you want to make your content for, what is the purpose of your content? What is the purpose of your content temple? What are your core content pillars? If your end goal is a career making content, what do you want to have achieved five, 10 years from now in that career? Not just a few pieces of content, but consider your entire body of work. Obviously, your content doesn't all have to be the exact same thing, but the majority of what you make should all more or less make sense to be together. Consider this. If someone were to watch 10 of your videos, 10 hours of your streams, look at 10 of your photos, read 10 of your blog posts, what do you hope that this person would learn, think, or feel after this? If someone were to watch 10 of my videos after I started really hitting my groove, any random 10 videos, I would hope that they would feel empowered to improve their content, pursue the brand deals that are right for them, and consider learning the ocarina. While all of my primary pillars are very educational, that doesn't have to be the case. Your content pillars can lean more towards education, more towards inspiration, more towards entertainment, or some combination of these. Like considering the same question of what if they watch 10 of your videos, a more entertainment-oriented gaming creator might want their audience to be impressed at their skill, laugh from their humor, or be inspired to try a game or a challenge or some mix of these. The point is, your content pillars are the core identity of yourself online, your brand, whatever. And your core purpose as a creator should guide what these pillars end up being. And if your content pillars are strong, your answer should be yes to the following point. Do your content bricks fit together cohesively? If an individual piece of content is one brick, does it align with your core pillars? 
Like, you, you can have an assortment of bricks of different shapes and sizes and cobble them to fit together, but at the end, they still need to fit together somehow. The content pillar that I'm building right now is all about educating and empowering creators. As such, that's where the majority of my content is. Not everything is the exact same topic, but it all pretty cohesively fits together, and if someone watched my 10 most recent videos, they would really have a sense that this is what I stand for. Of course, you might want to expand beyond your core pillars sometimes, but the bulk of your content should be consistent and supportive to your core content pillars, your core purpose, your core brand identity as a creator. That said, it is very okay to experiment and step outside of your comfort zone with content, especially early on. Like, make the content you want to make, and try new things. You won't know what your core content pillars are until you spent some time experimenting, discovering what you enjoy creating, and what you're good at. As you develop your skill, as you develop your unique voice, and as you sort of define what your pillars are, it's important to be consistent with those pillars to develop a strong, cohesive brand. But again, even once your brand is well established, it's okay to take risks sometimes. And regardless of your cohesion with your pillars or your level of experimentation outside of your pillars, it's important to find ways for your content to support itself. Do your content bricks support each other? Use your content to cross-pollinate with itself. If I have an overlapping idea between two videos, you know I am sure as heck going to mention that related video in the video that I'm talking about. If I have an older video on a topic and I'm talking about that same topic in a different light now, a viewer interested in this topic will probably want to watch the other video on that same topic. To illustrate, on my video about when you might want to avoid brand deals, I echo a lot of points I've made in previous posts, given that I mentioned those throughout the video. And look, I'm doing it right now, mentioning a video that mentions videos. I'm cross-pollinating my content as we speak. Think of these ways to tie your content together and let them support each other as like the mortar that holds bricks together when you're laying your content bricks in your content temple. This concept is starting to feel a little pretentious, but it made sense in my head, so we're rolling with it. <laughs> you can stack a pile of bricks without any adhesive, but it'll be pretty easy to knock over. On the flip side, you can build a lot higher and take a lot more risks if you take more time and care connecting your content together and adding that adhesive layer. Like, you'll notice many, many successful YouTubers now, instead of just having a generic end screen, they give a specific recommendation for what to watch next at the end of their video, especially if it's like a relevant topic from the video they were just talking about. I do it too. This also really helps your audience to understand what you're all about, because someone stumbles upon one of your videos and they find out like, oh, I'm interested in this topic, I like this video, and they're recommending me, if I liked this video, I should watch this video next. If your audience goes down that rabbit hole, they will have an extreme, clear understanding of what, you have, what you stand for, and they'll probably convert into a fan. Just like how you can convert into a fan right now if you hit that subscribe button. <laughs> but the idea is by connecting all your content together, it not only does it show one brick that someone could look at, it showcases your entire content temple, your entire core pillar, and what you stand for. It's like a complete portfolio rather than one document. Turning this into an office analogy instead of a... Uh, construction bricklaying analogy. But this type of thing can apply to any genre of content. If a gaming creator does some unique challenge in Zelda Breath of the Wild, they might recommend that you watch a different challenge they did in that game. Similarly, a photographer who's reviewing a specific type of portrait lens might recommend a video that gives a tutorial on specific styles of portrait photography. Or if a musician covers a song from a particular band, they might recommend that the viewer watches a different cover that they've made from that same band. The stronger you build ties between your content, the more each piece of content helps you compound your growth as a creator. Every piece of content you make becomes an entry point into your rabbit hole of this portfolio on a topic, and then every new piece of new content you make helps to support your old content. To really illustrate the power of this, imagine video A. It's about a certain topic and it was released in August of 2022. At the end of video A, you recommend that someone watches video B on a similar topic from June 2022. And that points to video C, which helps to flesh out that same topic, and that's from October of 2021. And then sometime in the future, you make another video that points back to video A, and then you keep making a conga line of content that someone can go down, enjoy, and take something useful or entertaining from. Many people will go down this complete rabbit hole and probably become a big fan of yours. 
If these viewers are interested in whatever topic you're giving them, then connecting it all together gives them even more material and adds so much value to their enjoyment, their education, or whatever. It is a major win-win scenario to connect your content together and give good recommendations for what to watch next. You build your community, and that community gets so much material for whatever topic that they're interested in that you make. And of course, there are people who got gigantic without making such cohesive efforts, but these cases are the exception, or they started making YouTube videos in 2006 and just got lucky. <laughs> Here's an analogy that I like to think of with comparing the people who got lucky and the people who build with intention. It's like building Stonehenge versus the pyramids. Stonehenge is impressive and super old, but it's not like a structure structure per se. It definitely had a purpose, and it's definitely impressive, but the most impressive thing is that it's been around for so long, you know? This is like how many YouTubers got really famous in the early days before anyone even considered to apply any form of intentionality or business strategy into their YouTube content platform. Like, it's impressive that they built something that amazing at all. Like Stonehenge. On the other hand, the pyramids have an extremely clear structure, and they came thousands of years after Stonehenge was built. Each brick on the pyramids was specifically cut to fit together with the other bricks to build the amazing structure. Just like how you can build an amazing content temple. Devise your strategy, understand your core, and brick by brick, you'll build something amazing. My cat is stretching in the background. To add some extra oomph to this analogy, there's multiple pyramids, and there's lots of different artistic pieces and temples all around them. Like, the sphinxes, and whatever. So this is exactly to say, yes, you do need to dedicate a lot of time and attention to building your core temple, but you can try other things along the way that don't even need to fit inside your temple. You can build across multiple core pillars or stuff that just feels completely irrelevant just because you wanted to make it. But the main takeaway I want you to get from this video is to consider your entire body of work as a creator, not just one piece of content, not just what feels right in any given moment. When intentionally trying to build your career as a creator, you can't just consider each individual piece of content. Consider your entire body of work and understand what it stands for or what you want it to stand for. This is to say, you are far more likely to succeed as a content creator if you build something cohesive. And this is what I'm using the content temple concept to hopefully illustrate to you. Know who your content is for, what you stand for in your content, and understand how to cohesively connect all your content together to build something amazing. Are you a museum of fine arts, or are you a rodeo? Are you Stonehenge, or are you the pyramids? Build your content temple and make it stand for something that connects deeply with your audience. If your goal is to make content creation your career, it's important that your content stands on its own whether or not you're live streaming it. I highly recommend watching my video on why streaming alone isn't sustainable for a creative career. Leave a like, subscribe for more, and watch that video next. Best of luck and happy creating.